Hi, I'm Blair with Wisecraft Handmade, and it's time for Quilting and Answer Thursday. Each week, I share tips to help us all be better quilters, and recently I've had some viewer questions about how I tie my quilts. staying home, maybe while you're staying home you're finishing up some old projects, then maybe you have some quilts ready to be quilted. And tying is easy, you can do it at home, and it's actually very pretty, I enjoy it. So here we go. So when I'm talking about tying my quilts together, here's what I mean. Once your quilt top is sewn and finished, you need to add a backing layer. So pretend we have a little miniature quilt here. You need a backing layer behind it. Here's the quilt top. And you have a batting layer in between the two. So you gotta hold all those layers together somehow. And one of the first ways that I learned to do that was tying. The first quilt I ever made was one out of my daughter's baby clothes. Here it is. and. At that time, I had no idea there was any other way to hold the layers together other than tying. So uh, on this one, I used wool yarn. I tied it in the corners of each of the blocks intentionally to hide my wonky points. And it was a nice surprise when I washed it and I realized that the yarn felted up into these little, tiny little pom-poms. So, I decided that I liked it a lot and I became more interested in tying quilt layers together even as my quilting skills advanced and these days I really do still love the surface texture of a tied quilt. I just think it adds another element. So I wanted to show you how I do it. tips on tying quilt layers together. So somehow you're going to need to mark the top of your quilt where you want to tie it and I usually do that with something like a friction pen or maybe a chalk pencil and to figure out how far apart you need to space your ties look on your, your batting packaging because it'll tell you the maximum size or the maximum um, width and length apart your quilting needs to be. So I know that for my batting that I use, which is Quilter's Dream cotton batting, that you can have the stitch or the ties spaced up to eight inches apart for it to still hold together. I'd probably put them a little closer together than that. But so you get that information, you decide how far apart you want your ties to be, and then you measure and pre-mark directly on your quilt top with the friction pin once it's sandwiched together. Um, so I do this with a ruler and space ties a certain amount apart across the quilt top. Another tip that I found, I'm not a garment sewer, but I use these buttonhole spacers. These are great. If you lay these across your quilt, you can stretch them out pretty far. And then what you can do is mark each spot that you're then going to go back and quilt. So this has been really handy. So normally I quilt with yarn um, of some kind, cotton, wool. Um, you can also quilt with um, pearl cotton or embroidery floss or something like that, or sashiko string or things like that. Um, so for my yarn, I tend to use a needle that's like a chenille needle. Uh, I think this is like a, I'm not sure what size this is. I'll look it up and I'll link it below, but I think it's like a 16 or 18. But you want to make sure that your, th that your needle has a pointy tip, not a blunt end, and you want to make sure that the yarn goes through the eye of the needle. So just experiment with what you have, but get yourself a long length of yarn. I don't knot it at the end. I've marked these four uh, holes here and let's start sewing. 
So I'm going to always go through the front of the quilt and then come up through the back. And it's important when you make these holes that you allow about a quarter inch minimum of space in between where you go in and where you come out because you just need a little bit of extra um, fabric in there. Otherwise, as the quilt ages, that would turn into uh, a big hole if the two holes that you're making today are spaced too closely together. So I'm going to leave a long tail on that side. And then without clipping my thread, I'm going to go in to the next hole and do the same thing and then just come out. through and again leave a long tail sort of like this in between those two stitches and then we're going to do the next one leave another long tail long tail there and then clip a long tail on that end. If I'm working on a large quilt I'm going to do that all the way across the quilt or as long as my length of yarn will allow me to do it. It makes it go a lot faster. So once I do that to the whole quilt then I go back and I tie and to do that I will snip all of these and then I make a square knot around the hole but what I do is I will loop the, the loop twice, so I'll make kind of a larger square knot because you don't want to stress this hole and make like a little pleat and gather up the fabric because if you do that you're permanently stretching that area and stressing that fabric and it's going to tear through as the quilt ages. So to do, um, the way I do my square knots is I loop through once. I loop through again and then I pull it snug but not too tight. I'll pull it really tight and then I go back and do the same thing. Two loops for the first, second, and then I pull it snugly over that top loop and then trim my ends to probably more like half an inch, three quarters of an inch, something like that. Nothing longer than that. So loop it through two times like that and then pull it down and just make sure that this fabric underneath that's still nice and smooth. Do it again, looping it through two times. And there you have it. So you would tie the ties all the way down the quilt and that's basically how you tie your quilt. So here is the denim quilt that's on the cover of um, Wisecraft Quilts. And I used worsted wool, uh, which will not felt if you wash this. These, these will not felt up into little pom-poms like the, uh, the baby quilt did. But I chose to tie at every single point of these diamonds, this diamond area. So I chose a spot um, in the design and I tied it every single time at that one part of the design. That way I don't have to measure. Um, I just choose, you know, if I come to that little area, then I make a stitch. I like that idea because if you have some points that aren't exactly lining up, it kind of hides that, which is pretty cool. Another quilt from Wisecraft Quilts. For this one, I just measured and marked across the whole quilt. So you would use something like this to measure your to measure and mark where you'd go back and make each each stitch. And again, I used worsted wool on this one so it won't felt up. But this is what it looks like on the back. It's just like a little series. I don't even know if you can see them of just little tiny stitches. But I really like the texture that the blue adds to all these colors. It adds a color, kind of an unexpected color. 
This quilt is my Stepping Stones pattern, and I free motion quilted all of the, really over the surface of the whole quilt, but then went back and tied the corners of these diamond shapes just for some added surface texture. So I tied them with worsted wool, and then I also included a little felt square I just stitched right into it when I made the tie. If I wash this, then probably the felt is going to change and, and mat up a little bit, but I think that would also add some really cool texture. So here's an example of tying with something besides wool. So this is my friendship bracelet pattern, and this was inspired by a summer making friendship bracelets with my daughter when she was in middle school. And I didn't want to tie it with wool. I tied it actually with pearl cotton, kind of reminiscent of uh, the embroidery floss that we used to make the, the friendship bracelets. And again, I just measured and marked across the quilt and then just went through and sewed them all in. So here's another example of where I actually had already quilted all of the the blocks in this quilt and I went back and decided to not only add ties in the middle of these darker squares but to make a little pom-pom and put it in there. So I like the way this turned out. This was purely for surface interest on the quilt and also you can see I think that there's little X's in the centers of the lighter diamond shapes. So pom-poms in the darker and X's in the lighter. So here's another example of where I added pom-poms at the end just as a way to just make a quilt pattern more fun or play with the sort of the whimsical feel of these Berry J fabrics. is a four patch picnic blanket quilt from my first book and the front is made of just men's shirts cut into a four patch but the backing is made with a washable shower curtain liner because I wanted to be able to lay it onto wet grass. Of course for obvious reasons I didn't want to put a bunch of holes in the, the back in the shower curtain liner so I just chose to make one simple knot at the center of every single four patch. So they're just really simple ties. So I hope this gives you some inspiration to tie your quilts. If you have other tips for tying quilts, I'd love to hear them too. So let me know in the comments. As always, find even more tips, patterns, tools, and inspiration at my website, wisecrafthandmade.com. And be sure and subscribe to my channel on IGTV and YouTube to know when each new video is posted. Stay safe and I will see you next week.